Hello, everybody, and welcome to Love Unlocks Live Sessions. It's Tuesday. It's one o'clock South Africa time, and we are back live. Uh, if you are, have been following this, you may have noticed that last week we didn't have any live sessions. Uh, it's mainly because I was man down <laughs> with a bit of the flu. Just the normal flu, I promise, the normal one. Uh, and uh, But we're all good, we're all back and very excited about this week. And we've got an amazing guest today and Thursday as well, so I am super excited about it. Love Unlocks Live is all about bringing you stories of how God's love has unlocked people's lives and how He continues to unlock other people's lives through the lives of the people that I'm talking to. And it's so exciting to hear these things. It's, it's inspiring. It's encouraging. And uh, we're going to share another great story with you today. So thanks for joining us. And all of this is brought to you by our ministry called Love Key. And at Love Key, we focus on ministering wholeness to families and unity to the body of Christ. And we believe that whole families build a whole nation. And we are excited to see that God brings a revival in our generation through music, through teaching, through bringing the word of God in a real way. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting our ministry. We really uh, appreciate it so much. Today, I've got an exciting guest. He's all the way from the UK. He's an international worship leader, music pastor, songwriter, and producer. And uh, he is very passionate about seeing the body of Christ rise up in worship and intercession and in unity in our generation. So you guys can see there's a, there's a link there in our passions. Uh, he's all the way from the UK live today with us. Please welcome Mr. Noel Robinson. Yay! Yay. Oh, it's so good to meet you. I've been looking forward to this, Heinz. Uh, you know, ever since you contacted me, I've secretly, I've been secretly going, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Wow, that that means a lot, man. Thank you so much. I'm 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 like so excited to have you here. We've got an international worship leader on the show. It's so cool. Thank you for making time. I really appreciate it so much. How are well, you? And how are you guys doing well, in this well, whole lockdown they me, thing? They call me international worship leader, but like the only international is Zoom, uh, Skype, and Zoom now. <laughs> All the flights are down for me to go anywhere. Oh man. Certainly, <laughs> yeah. I'm doing well. Cool. How's it been in the UK this five months that we've been in this whole situation? Yeah, it's been an interesting time because, um, um, you know, there's been sort of like the whole humanity, no humanity going through um, stuff that, you know, I'm seeing. And, and then there's the whole thing about God working with us and, and what is he showing us? So there's been a whole lot of prophetic stuff going on and, and, uh, you know, even globally, mm. you know, the people, globe you know a, 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 a virus shuts down the whole world and causes uh e e economies economies to fold and 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 so we're seeing we're seeing we're most certainly in 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 an end time scenario i'm not saying the end time but i'm saying an end time scenario and it's so much more important now for us finding identity and purpose in in this time yeah so a lot of stuff god been speaking to me about that um, so yeah, it's been an interesting time. And one way I'm like going, Oh Lord, help me. <laughs> All my events and stuff are cancelled. Uh, you know, on the other hand, I go, Well, God, what are you saying in this? What are you yeah. saying in this? What do I do with this? So it's um it's been I don't want to use the fun fun, you know, frivolously, but it's kind of been fun trying to like work it out in my spirit and 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 just seeing how God does that. But most certainly He's shown up so strong in, 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 in my life, you know, so sure. I have to say that God's on, on point, you know. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that's that's what's been happening for, for all of us is we've been forced to to take a moment and and to reevaluate and think about things in a whole new way. Um, and, and I just want to reach out quickly to our people logging in with, I've, I've seen people logging in from all over the place, different countries, South Africa, New Zealand, uh, Australia. And, and thank you so much. Please tell us where you're from, where you're listening from. Uh, if you've heard Noel's music before, give us a thumbs up. And, uh, and if you've had any kind of interesting experience in this lockdown, you can also just comment on that and let us know how you've been dealing and coping with this whole thing. Um, but Noel, uh, you've, um, I don't know what things are like in the UK. We've been on a pretty heavy lockdown. Uh, they just yeah. lift, they just lifted it a bit. We're on our lockdown level two. Um, how's it been in the UK? Well, I mean, it, it's quite interesting as of, as of yesterday, as of actually two weeks ago, um, you know, um, 
things keep changing because what what they've done now is that if partic- if a particular town has seen a rise or a spike in in the covid virus then they've shut that particular town down rather than shut the whole nation down so we're in quite an interesting thing where churches are beginning to open up they've allowed churches to gather uh, but limited amount of people in a room and most certainly uh, you can't have a full team of, of worshippers singing. Um, you normally have one person singing. So there are a lot of guidelines around singing. For a while, singing has been totally banned. So you can imagine what that's like. Whoa. So the last uh, four weeks, I think, have been quite interesting because I've I've done three live events. But they've been to um, churches where people are two metres apart. Um, and sure. they've, gone, they've gone live online. So yeah. uh, certainly we, we are seeing the church... Uh, move differently um the country again you know there's lots of arguments about you know bars and pubs opening up because they need to get the economy going nurseries and schools opening up uh and we're not sure where we are so things keep moving around Uh, like i said last week if you decide you want to go to paris for a few days you could go uh it changed two days ago that if you're in paris and you're coming back to england uh, you know, uh, you're going to have to isolate for 14 days. Sure. Okay. So, and that impacts people's work and everything. So, yeah, we're seeing changes, but but it's still quite intense. Yeah. Are you guys allowed to have? Uh, how many people are they allowing in church to meet? Uh, we've got a we've got a thing of you can do 50. That's it for now, and they no, have no, to be. We're a little bit above that. I think that what we are, it's it's if your church is say like my church is like you know. 14, 1500 people, we're allowed up to 350 people. Okay. Uh, but, you know, uh, if your church is 150 and the space can only accommodate, um, you know, 30 or 40, and a lot of it depends on the size of your space All right. and whether you can get that two meter um, separation between people. Okay, um, so not, they're not limiting you to a specific amount, it's more like a percentage and based on your floor space. Absolutely. That's, Which is fair enough. that's such a hectic thing because now leaders have to figure out and people have to decide: do they go? Do they not go? Sure, it's. And I think I think most leaders are kind of like, um, you know, the new norm is is what we're doing here, Hein. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, you know, um, that's the new norm. So now you're trying to go back to an old um, formula. People are kind of going, well, I, I could actually do church for an hour and a half because that's the limited time yeah. i can do it for an hour and a half and then get on with my day uh, <laughs> sort of thing so there, there is there is something that obviously the bible talks about assembling ourselves together gathering together which yeah. is really important but uh, there's a sense where um also people are fearful um, of of covid and and spaces where many people gather so um this is something that's in the heart of most leaders in the uk you know, will it get back to the normal? Because it, it does mean um, economy, the ecology of churches are changing. And how do you make that work? Yeah. Um, there are quite a few churches that I've heard of that have shut down completely. Sure. Like they won't open up again, shut down or? Yeah, because, you know, some of them were leasing buildings and those buildings you needed people to come and actually offerings and tithes yeah. made. But when you're, when the giving has gone down in church, 30, 40%, um, it certainly impacts a lot of other things. Yeah. That's hectic. So, uh, you know, you've, you've traveled quite a bit. You've, I'm assuming you've been to quite a few different kinds of churches and assemblies in, in the UK and, and the surrounding areas. Um, how was, how was the, the, I almost want to say, how was the UK church doing before lockdown and, and how is it doing now, in your opinion? Well, I mean, there was a great sense. I was, I was doing some national events, which um, were quite uh, quite significant in terms of, um, you know, one of the things I've, I've been saying is that uh, worship and evangelism is actually going to work flow together in this season. Yeah. you have saying that for a, a few years. And, and unity was part of the, the crux of that. And we started to see much of that happening with um, gatherings of evangelists who then went out on the streets. We're seeing that happen with churches really 
picking up this evangelistic mandate sure. and reaching out into community. And and that's what we saw. And then obviously the, the shutdown, lockdown, can't do anything came, came into play, you know. <laughs> and um, But it hasn't changed that. I still feel that that's one of the things that, that God has most certainly in the UK, uh, with, and maybe globally the church has really come into that place where evangelism is 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 the key. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, man's souls, man's hearts are, are really uh, in a place, you know, and, you know, the biggest thing, biggest thing we have is fear in the earth. It, it, it is, it is the biggest thing. Yeah. And, and, and most certainly the church and the believer has the antidote for that. You know, the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. A sound mind, love, you know, power of love, you know, and, um, um, you know, love, perfect love casts out fear, you know, it, here we, we, you know, you're talking about love and, and the power of love in our lives. Um, you know, so I think churches won't look the same, but I believe that believers will be the church that people see on their streets, on their roads. Um, don't be surprised when, fear grips families and they find out that you're a believer and they come to you and say, look, we'd love you to pray for our family. Sure. Yeah. Because we're, we're just fearful and you get the opportunity to be that, that power of love yeah. in their life. That's so you know? good. So this is part of the journey. Yeah. I think we're going to see a massive revival because I think there's been a shaking of, That's the key. I, I didn't want to get to that. I didn't want to get to that word yet. <laughs> <laughs> Revival. Well, I, I, you know, whatever. I think people have different connotations to that. I, I think a revival is, is a, is, is a, a, a thing where a lot of people come to a realization or a revelation that they need God. And I think there's, there's a shaking of the world. People that don't believe are being forced to question what they believe and where, what happens if everything goes wrong that you've been. You know, because you're putting your faith in something. We've all been given faith by God. Whether you believe in Him or not, you have faith, and you're going to put that faith somewhere. And if you've put it in money or your job or you know whatever it may, uh, relationships, all of that's been shaken. And yeah, then, I mean, that's yeah. just been shaken. Times. That's church. exactly. The church, I mean, you think about this: that um, you know, every Sunday um, across this world, in whatever continent you're on. There's a gathering of people who call themselves Christians, yeah. God, and that place of where they go mm. no longer can be a gathering place. Church, as we know, is shaken. Yes. No, and, th and, and, and it's the perfect backdrop to, you know, I wasn't getting to the word, but you mentioned the revival and now you started me off. <laughs> you know, where, where revival is, you know, re, re is a pretext to, um, to something quite interesting and that, that God is awakening humanity yeah. to, 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 to spiritual things. And, and, and what we're seeing um, is, is revival is, is really a stirring up of stuff that's already been there. Yeah. That you talked about every man's got faith. So we've got to believe that the chair that we're sitting on can hold us. So you have a level of faith. Um, uh, but God is most certainly pointing it, um, point everything back to him. Because in him, that's where revival happens. And we talk about outpouring, um, you know, outpourings. In the last days, I pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Those are gatherings. And, and we talk about awakenings. I believe that revival's personal outpourings is maybe translocal, but awakenings are global. Yeah. And we are most certainly going to see in this season an awakening like we've never seen before. I totally agree with that. And I... I, th I agree with that as well. I think there's been a shaking of the world and the church, and the church is, is forced to ask questions like, what is church? Have we been worshiping ministry or have we been worshiping God? Have we been worshiping songs or have we been using songs to worship God? Anything yeah. that has to do with ministry can become an idol in your life. And it's, I think all of that stuff has been shaken yeah. and we had to rethink how do, we, how do we approach these things, you know? You know, I got asked the question, uh, 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 you know, well, keep getting asked the question, uh, are we redefining worship? And I said, yeah, we are. And, and they said, what was your definition of worship? And I said, worship is man's, humanity's response to the revelation of who Jesus is. It's 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 as simple as that. So good. 
because if we if we put all the other stuff around it so for example if we put musical styles around it or what the people doing it look like mm. or whatever then what we're doing we're forming the basis of idolatry yeah simply because i don't look like you and i don't speak like you in actual fact culturally we are we are different yeah uh, but i can't say that the way i speak and the way i look and the way i am is god's perfect way to for worship if that makes sense yeah it, the way you are no in actual fact that's why everyone has a heart and and you can see the story of david where david has a revelation of god that happens outside of temple and he becomes king. And you can tell from his writing, because when you look at the mosaic model of worship and, and you see the mosaic around a tabernacle, you know, Moses coming down and, and the, the covenant is written on the stones and, and, and the men build the tabernacle. And everything now is a ritual that is birthed out of first generation revelation. Yeah. And when I say first generation revelation, um, there's a statement that I keep on making. I'm saying that um, thunder is the sound of lightning. But it's quite easy to emulate the sound of thunder without seeing the lightning. But actually, <laughs> the lightning doesn't then contain the sound of the thunder doesn't contain the revelation of the lightning. Oh, that's good. Every time, every time sound is reproduced, it loses, it loses something of its truth. So when they started as as the children of Israel and the commandments came and they began to worship God, they were first first generation seeing God at work. They're the ones that saw. Uh, the, the fire, the pillar by fire. They're the ones that clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. They were never sick. Yeah. In actual fact, hunger and it fell from the heavens. Um, you know, water came out of the rock. But there comes a time towards the end of that where you can see where even Eli and his sons, it becomes idolatrous because now it's not about real God. And the Bible says this, that the word of God grew dim. The light of God grew dim in a generation. Mm. And, and, time and that's not because they weren't carrying out the rituals because part of explaining why it went dim was the fact that the guys were in the in the temp temple collecting the offerings and rather than putting the offerings in the right place they were eating it for themselves yeah so you you, you can you see that picture there yeah. so along comes david and david goes hey nothing wrong with mosaic worship but you can see it in chronicles where nothing wrong with mosaic worship mate you know it's the same God that did all those miracles in the wilderness, but there's something new coming. Yeah, and and it begins to, uh, it begins this, this whole process of explaining God, and you can see the order that he puts in. So he, when he becomes king, he chooses all the Levites to carry out to carry out the, the stuff that happens in the temple. They're all seers first. They're people who are filled with the Spirit. Yeah. They were the only one in the Old Testament that was filled with the Holy Spirit. So you, you get a sense where uh, seeing is very important. And um, when when you can see when you can see God at work, you are now looking at the movement of worship. And look what's happened. So worship as we know, and we're artists, you know, I, I live I live by traveling from church to church, from nation to nation, teaching and singing. Yeah. And that's I make a living and that door is shut and I go whoa but I, I find it quite interesting that every time there's a reformation um, that something is invented so David is about to bring a reformation and what he does he starts to make instruments wow that contain the sound of the new the new worship sure and he chooses men who can carry the sound yeah skillful what men I'm really about, what I'm glad about David is this I'm so glad we didn't have recorders that could record the actual sound. But he appointed Levites that could record. That's why we have all the words. Sure. So they had the temple writing down. Yeah. So there's a sense where um, the words that David speak now are life to us. But I'm so glad that the sound that he made is not. Or else what we'd say is, my gosh, you need to look like David. You need to sound like David musically. Uh, but here we are in a reformation. I believe that there's a reformation of worship happening. Yeah. The last was the, the invention of the printing press now we're on the cusp of 5g wow every time there's a reformation there is something that happens in the earth that marks it yeah and god uses that thing to now propel the gospel to new dimensions and new places i believe that we're on the cusp of something very profound sure okay that, so that's revival for me 
It's definitely exciting. And I think there's, um, ugh, there, there's so many, there's, as you said earlier, there's so much fear flying around. And even, you know, you're saying a thing about 5G. I've been seeing so many conspiracy theories flying around about, oh, yeah, about the, that's going to spread Corona and I don't know what else. But, but what, it, what it, on a positive note, what it can do is to, like you say, reach more people with the gospel. It's going to make th uh, things more. And, and also, at the same time, I'm sure the enemy will use it for, for nefarious things. But as, as Christians, we can use it to, to get the gospel to go further. And I think every time we see those things, we, we need to press in, like you're saying, and, and see, well, how can we use this to, 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 to further yeah. God's kingdom? That's, that's powerful. Well, I mean, you, you think what we're operating in, I mean, we're just talking about, you know, science. Um, you know, think about what we're operating in. We're operating in, in, in something called electromagnetic atmosphere. Yeah. Where airwaves, radio waves, television waves, digital waves, uh, light, sound, all travel in this in this scientific It's all thing. It's all over the place, yeah. And, 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 and there's a scripture that says that uh, it talks about the prince of the power of the air. Mm. And if you read it, you, you would say that... Um, um, the prince of the power, because this is one of the things that we sometimes uh, look at things uh, of the funny way. But it says it's really saying that the air has power. God was saying that the air, the atmosphere was power. When God said, let there be light, he wasn't talking about sun and moon. He was talking about every single component, carbon, whatever it may be that we look at from a scientific point of view that things are made up. Every molecule, I want you to come to the revelation that I'm about to speak. And I'm going to change your nothingness into something. Wow. Because every time there's a reformation, there's a voice that speaks. There's a sound that's released in heaven. We talk about the seals being released from heaven. Sure. Uh, there's a sound that's being released. Yeah. And, and, and what all God is saying, I want you to hear that sound and response because that sound is based on the lightning. Yeah. So I want you to see me in it. So this whole 5G thing. Um, somebody said to me, I was talking to Graham Kendrick, you might know the worship leader, I was interviewing him for a TV program, and he said, some people say that, you know, the COVID is is not of God. And he goes, well, if it's not of God, God's most certainly going to use it. Yeah. And he said, is it, if, it's, if it is of God, then God's going to use it. However we, we look at it, we have to find a God thing yeah. in it. And this is why fear, fear will stop us from seeing what God is doing. And it will cause us to focus on how we're feeling and what we are seeing. And and all God said, I want you to embrace my love. You know, what your program's about. Embrace my love for you and begin to see me in everything. Sure. Yeah, he, rem he, re he, remains a, he remains a good father. I've, it's so good that you're saying that because I've been, I've been challenged in my own faith journey about what is, what is good and what is bad according to God versus what is it according to us? And, and God has showed me in the, in the smallest thing in my own experience, you know, I'm a father of uh, three boys and a girl and yeah. I've, I've, my boys are 10, eight and six now. So I've, I've, I've had to do a lot of training, disciplining. Yeah. And there are times when I put things in place in my house to have, to have order, to protect yeah. them Absolutely. for them that is not some of those rules or guidelines are not good they don't experience it as good they don't get excited about it but i know as the father it's good for them yeah and and when god showed me that i started looking at things a very different way and, and i think that's what the word of god is you know i love that i love that thought you know i've got four children they're all adults you know i've got a couple of grandchildren and 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 the whole thing about when we do set up when we set up our homes um there, there is we set up things as safety we yeah. know that fire, fire is good in our home because it keeps our homes warm mm. fire is not good for you to put your hand in it yeah exactly you know fire is good so we've got to teach them the right way and i think that there's there's a sense where um you know i shared with a, a group of people are saying that the gifts of the holy spirit are quite profound we can see them in ephesians where but to manifest the gifts of the holy spirit you have to be filled with the holy spirit mm we have the gifts of Jesus and to manifest the gifts of the fruit of the spirit we have to have Jesus in our lives to truly manifest them because you know we talk about goodness and we talk about the, the fruit of the spirit mm. well humanity's goodness is actually limited 
Yeah. I'm going to be good to you because you're good to me. Whereas when you come into uh, the, the ecology of Jesus in your life, the gifts, you're good to, you have to be good to everyone. You know, turn your other cheek. And you're like, what? That, that's not great. Yeah. Like, no, no. <laughs> Jesus. But, but the issue around those, those can really be manifest only if you're in a relationship with the Holy Spirit and Jesus. But the gift of God, all the gifts that God give are always given to humanity. Yeah. Not given to humanity, whether humanity believes in God or not. That's why it says, for God so loved the world he gave his son. His love for the world was not based on whether you love him. Yeah. But he gave, you know, and I'll share, and I won't go into it because it's another story. There's only two things that came out of heaven, and that's Jesus and music. Sure. But let's move on. <laughs> but truly, this love, this love of God, and, and, and there we have these wars around choice of words. You know, somebody said, how can you use the word reckless? Um, we reckless speak of love's God, God, God's love. How yeah. can you, how can you use outrageous i wrote a song called outrageous love i, I listened to it yeah it's beautiful that song to be outrageous to describe god and i'm like going hold on god operates in and out of culture it's it's if you lived in the days of the old testament you would love ezekiel because ezekiel his words were like you know can he dry bones live and uh you know you know da, 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 da. Yeah. but daniel was alive at the same time and you would think that daniel in the Babylon was not really a Christian because he lived outside of the the children of Israel. Yeah. But God was working with Daniel in such a way that today, when we look at scripture, he is one of the major prophets yeah. that actually speak about times and seasons from his writings. Yeah. And I go, well, who is God using? And what we have to understand that we're living in a season where God is beginning to operate out of the parameters that we have created for him. Mm. He's some people are getting saved that in your books could not get saved. Wow. In your books, you put them off. Yeah. In your book, they said there's no way they've lost it. Sure. There's no way they God can save them and forgive them. But yet so we preach the gospel of forgiveness and act surprised when Men are giving their lives to God. So good. And the weakness that you know that they've done because it's in print, because they're in prison for it, and you're going, well, they're not really saved. And I'm going, no, yeah. they are saved. Yeah. Because outrageous, this this reckless, and it's a word we use to describe um, someone who doesn't care about your system, Yeah. who doesn't care about what you think. Yeah. Outrageous and reckless, people who do outrageous things, they don't care about what you think. They yeah. don't care about what I think. They're going to go, I'm just going to do that. Yeah, it's it seems, you know, to the to the stand, the social standard or the whatever standard you have, that it's, it's outrageous or reckless. And I think that's where that the heart of that song and your song comes from is when you look at it from a logical point of view, a human point of view, it doesn't make sense that God would save this one. But at the same time, you go, well, I shouldn't have been saved you know, I didn't deserve it. And that's the thing is we are, God loved us all while we were still sinners. And where the, yeah. the Bible says, if you have transgressed one iota of the, the Ten Commandments, you've digressed all of them. So you can think, well, I've only lied a little bit, but it's as bad as murder. Um, and, exactly. and, and so we all need a savior. That's the bottom exactly. line. You know, that song, Outrageous Love, um, you know, it was kind of birthed out of a, an example. You know, um, I've been married um, um, nine years. And um, my first date with my wife was in a place called, um, uh, in London, it's a place well known, um, East London, where Jack the Ripper, you might have heard stories of Jack the Ripper. And oh, yeah. A lot of old, uh, you know, 18th century Victorian London. Yeah. The around that you know um oliver twist and that kind of stuff and i meet her and she's handing out food to all these uh these men and and women who are rough sleepers sure and um and one of the guys he, he sort of says something to me he goes you know um basically i was a muslim and um i found myself in in a hard place like you know, this wasn't my life before, but I found myself 
in a hard place and I've lost it all, lost everything, family, and I found myself sleeping in the doorways. Mm. And it got me looking at people in a different way. You know, I'm very, I suppose, middle class, um, middle class uh, black person, you know, uh, and I wasn't raised on the streets. I I was raised in a Christian home with safety in its, in, in everything, do you know, I, I didn't experience a bad life, um, and 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 oftentimes we think about, well, how does the gospel apply to you? Well, I'm, I'm gonna come to that, but I, I began to put myself in the shoe of the story of this man, and there are many people now. All of us, if it wasn't for the grace of God, are one step away from being what we call down and out. Yeah. We're one step away. Many of us have been one decision away from losing it all. Mm. And, and maybe in our lives, some of us have lost it because we've gone through divorce or brokenness. We've gone through mental health health issues. We've, we've gone through broken places that we are still working with. We can't recover. We've not recovered from it. But yet still, there's this God who who sees the the brokenness and he doesn't turn his nose up at it. Yeah. But actually, the brokenness smells like an opportunity for miracle signs and wonders. And and all he asks is for for you to surrender as you are to that place. And and you surrender. And God turns your life around um, to his love becomes your identity. Being a down and out doesn't become your identity. Being somebody who's got mental issues or broken heart doesn't become your identity. It's just a, a process that you're going through because you're walking hand in hand with the God who's outrageous. So your family may have given up on you. Your your children Mate, I want to talk to you. Your your life has gone spiraling out of control. You've lost your identity in this season because your identity was what you did. And and you're worried about who am I now because I can't I'm going, this outrageous love that we talk about is a rescuer. This outrageous love poured out from heaven is the thing that when we hold on to it, it changed our life. Some people may be expecting it to happen supernaturally, just just like that. Yeah. Well, it does happen supernaturally, but there is a process. Because one of the things about the process is like anything. If there is a vessel that you pour water into it and it has holes in it, um, and you keep on losing water from it, it becomes a very expensive thing. But the issue is that you might have to stop pouring water for a moment and fix the holes so it can contain. And there's this beautiful picture of those that have been redeemed and, and, and saved and you're mended and God mends you with gold and, and although you look cracked and, and people may see the cracks, but when they get close, they see the cracks are not cement or clay. They're, they're, they're gold that holds it all together and that you're precious. That when, when God fills you with love, you now... Take what you have and pour it into somebody else and watch God heal that person because you've been healed. So now we become agents of outrageous love in the earth. That's good. And what we become, because we're the ones that are going to stop that man that's down and out. And we're going to see him sleep always. And we're going to go, what what can we do for you? Like Peter and say, silver and gold I don't have, but such I have, I'm going to give to you. And I'm going to tell you about the love of Christ. Mm. And, And that will change your mind and cause you to, reflect and we have stories around the world of people who whose stories have been absolutely amazing because of this outrageous love sure this is why what you're doing Heinz is amazing <laughs> no bro it's uh I, I i just do what what i feel god leads me to do as you do and and we we want to see lives change around the world as much as possible and it's it's awesome to see um how much depth there is behind your your ministry and your songs uh, to know that when you write, you write from this place of knowing this outrageous love and 
and you're sharing it with as many people as you can. Uh, I, I would love to know your where did your love for Jesus start? Uh, you said you got raised in a Christian home. Was there a, was there a moment of decision making of of change? Did it gradually happen? Uh, what was it like for you? Well, I, you know, I I have to say this that um, I love God. I didn't know who He was. So growing up in a Christian home, you know, I, I was seeing the lightning in my father's eyes. <laughs> didn't see the lightning in my eyes. So I was, the sound I was making is because I heard my dad, my dad make a sound. Yeah. You know, it's like a little child. Um, you know, your, your children probably mimic you because you're an amazing singer and musician, I'm sure. But they're like, oh, I'm going to be like dad one day. <laughs> you know, they, they don't have an understanding of why you sing. Yeah. Uh, they're just going to mimic you. And all of us have to go through that process. But there came a day when I was eight and I said, you know what? I think everything I've heard about this Jesus at eight years old, I went, I want to know more. And if no more, I'm going to get baptized. But I must say this, that my journey through my teens and early 20s, and I had experiences and encounters with God that showed me that he was real. Sure. And, and, and I think that, my salvation is always an extreme strain, but my salvation is, is continuously, or the testimony is continuously growing. Yeah. Um, every day that I, you know, um, that I experience God, um, I, I ascribe it to him. And it's part of my process of salvation because salvation really is humanity's response to the revelation of who Jesus is, which is the same phrase I use to worship. Yeah. That's why I often say that worship begins at the cross. And any worship leader who's leading and doesn't honor and stand in awe of the cross, then I have to actually question what it is that's the engine behind what you do. Yeah. Because because the cross and Jesus on that cross becomes the center of the center of um, time and humanity. Mm. Um, find our identity as sons of God in the cross. Now the journey goes on that three days later, he rose again. Yeah. He rose, and the same power that raised him from the dead lives in me. But I always go that same power started when I acknowledge who he was yeah. in his death and in his resurrection. And there's a sense where that becomes the heartbeat for joy. There's no true joy without the cross. There's no true breakthrough without the cross and the resurrection. There's no there's no true um, salvation, sanctification, all the things that you may attribute. There's no th true thing unless you accept this Jesus who died for you, rose again with power. Same power that he rose with is in you. And it's the power to live your life, to live your life in the freedom of being a son of God. And doesn't mean that as a child you get it wrong sometimes. We do. I've made many mistakes along the journey, many decisions I've made that have put me in difficult situations. But I, I, I love this scripture that says that God God is working it out for you because you love him mm. and you're according to his purpose. The cross gives us purpose. When we find our purpose and we love God, there's some stuff you'll get yourself in. But guess what? God is working it out. I remember as a young man, playing cricket in my neighbor's house. And number one, I'm playing with her children. I'm playing with my neighbor's children. And we're playing cricket. And it's just a game, all us in holidays. Uh, but Noel Robinson decides to try and swing the ball or hit the bat or hit the ball really heavily. And, and I actually break their window, their back window. And I am mortified because I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm thinking not about the broken window. I'm thinking about what my dad is going to do to me. <laughs> As any boy would. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the window's there. I'm really sorry I broke the window. I can't do nothing about that. Yeah. But I did what my dad is going to do. Yeah. Um, and I remember I, when I went home, I just said, Dad, I messed up. And he goes, what? And I went, I was playing cricket in, the, in our neighbor's back garden and I hit the ball through their window. And my dad looked at me and goes, why did you hit the ball? And I was like, I was playing cricket, dad. That's what you do, <laughs> cricket. And, and he goes, and he looked at me and he just went, oh. And what he does, what he does, he goes to their house and he says, I just need to take measurements for your window. My dad's a carpenter. Okay. He takes measurements for their window and he goes, 
he seals it up and he goes, I'm sorry that Noel did this. He apologizes for me. Yeah. And he's going to fix that window for you tomorrow. Wow. Dad goes, gets the glass pane, comes back and it's not double glazed in those days. It weren't double glazed. And he fixes this window like new. Wow. Now I never, ever, I never ever again, again played cricket in their garden. <laughs> and my dad didn't chastise me. Yeah. And I remember asking him, why didn't you? And he said, because you came to me, and when I, when I looked in your face, I knew that you weren't going to do that again. Yeah, you realized your mistake. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and he saw he saw repentance on me. Yeah, and I go, this is the this is part of the love of God. Yeah, that we don't walk, we're sons of God. We don't walk around with fear in our eyes for what God will do to us. Yeah, but but we stand in awe of all that He would do through us. That's beautiful. Yeah, because it and that's the thing about relationship is. When, when you, you know, they, I've seen this quote where they say, if, if, you're in, if you're religious and you mess up, you run away from the Father. But when you're in, in relationship and you mess up, you run towards the Father. And, I love and, that. and that's what you did. I think that's so beautiful. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. I, th I think one of, the, one of the most heart-wrenching things I've ever read was the beginning of, uh, I think it's Philip Yancey's book, What's So Amazing About Grace. He's got a story about... How he, yeah, yeah. how he tried to get this prostitute saved and didn't get through to her, eventually said, listen, please just come to church. And she said, why should I come to church? I already feel bad about myself. And, yeah. and just in that moment, you realize there's so many people that have a completely wrong idea of who God is because how certain Christians portray him as a judging yeah. You know, I'm going to hit you with a lightning bolt if you mess up kind of yeah. old man. And that's not who our God is. But, no. we, but we need to get the revelation of a loving God. Yes, he's a righteous and a just God, but he's a loving God. And when you approach him with humility and knowing, you know, who he is because you have this relationship, it, it yeah. makes all the difference in the world. That's amazing. And, and, and many of us, you know, um, maybe... You know, when we talk about walking in love, um, you know, we, we, we do not realize that uh, justice exists in love. Yeah. And 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 one of the things about, uh, like I said, you know, when I looked at my dad and I and I and I said, Dad, um, and because he didn't find out secondhand. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was something because if you'd heard from the parents or, or somebody else, he would have been very angry. But I have this relationship and he knows that I, I, I didn't do that on purpose. Yeah. So, and, I, and I've got this sense where, even though this is how powerful God is, because my dad's grace is limited, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the other things that, that, that yeah. I, it wasn't exactly like that. But people don't understand about the power of grace and receiving grace, you know, in, in, in your life for where you are maybe you're a believer listening to this and and you're thinking well there's some things that hidden away that god I, I can't share it with people and and i don't think god can forgive me and oftentimes it's got nothing to do with whether god will forgive you oftentimes the biggest barrier to it is whether you've forgiven yourself and 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 that's where we live we don't live in the forgiveness of god we live in the, whether we are forgiven ourselves yeah about in our lives and I, i've had to walk through that you know walking through failures uh, that that i felt would have counted me out totally and that's the fear coming in because living uh, living in you know my own <laughs> my own context of of forgiveness i got to forgive myself i realized that some things i didn't forgive myself and the moment i said okay i'm going to forgive myself because he's forgiven me and whoa and I begin to walk in that that place. It's funny how um, this incredible peace comes into your life. Yeah. That even though in the earthly realm, there may be a quote unquote judgment on it, i.e. give you an example, and that's not my story, but but somebody having a child out of wedlock. Yeah. He was condemned about that. Yeah. Um, child is not a sin. What may have happened, according to the word of God, is that that you stepped out of the will of God for your life yeah but the issue is that when you come to him he he, he 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 receives you and says i forgive you now the question is whether you forgive yourself beyond what you see and what you know because nine months of carrying a baby uh, 
and, and you're in a, and you're in a situation where you're being judged. And yeah. I'm not saying you're a great show. I'm just giving you that. In the earth, there are things that we do that that carry, and I don't say judgment, and they're not eternal judgments. There are ju- judgments of culture and 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 where we are. Mm. Do you know? And and they have they do have when we say judgment, they do have prices to pay to them you know um if i murdered somebody if i murdered somebody then it's standard that i'm going to be tried and put in prison um, i can find jesus there and be forgiven of my sins but i still have to serve consequences this- yeah, yeah, consequences. yeah yeah and i think that oftentimes we get the consequences of heaven so we paint a picture of this god that does evil things i'm living in the consequence of of my sins when god goes i've forgiven you you actually live in the consequences of whether you forgive yourself and can move on from that place and accept that my forgiveness is enough my love is enough my grace is enough so i think that somehow you know we're having this conversation and people may be listening and we say look hey wherever you are in this situation maybe do you know that having no faith can be seen as sin it's a crazy thing um not believing in God, there was a time, but God has grace for that. And he goes, if you ask for faith, he will give you faith to believe. Yeah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I want to encourage people who are listening onto this, Heinz, wherever you are in the world, that, that, that speak life over yourself. Yeah. Speak, speak life. Know that you're accepted. Know that you're loved by God. And maybe you are a woman that is, is striving for love from her husband or you're a son looking for affirmation. Just just know that. Yeah, we know those things are important. Uh, but just know that you're affirmed by God. And you're affirmed by God through the lives of many people who, who love you. Amen. Oh, that's so good, bro. I want to I wanna ask you about your... Your artistic process, how you how you link up the creative, artistic side with bringing that which you believe and you're passionate about Jesus and and His kingdom and helping people to have a moment of worship. How do you approach writing those songs? Uh, what is your what is your heart behind it? Your goal, your focus. Uh, what, what kind of feedback when you get that from people, you go, yes, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> I wish it was like that. I think, I think that, you know, as I've grown in the years um, of songwriting and, and, and um, you know, th- there's a technical side to things. As I say, there's a model of things yeah. that exist. And we know that um, in the Western world, um, a, a scale is Dore Farm, Doris, you know, Dore, do, 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 do. that's mm, a scale, right? Mm. And, and we often operate within those um, those models, you know, yeah. the European model of music. Yeah. Um, it, it slightly changes when you go to places like India and Asia where, where different instruments are, are tuned differently to different frequencies. So there's a technical side to it. Um, but, but part of my process is this, that um, God gave me a revelation that, um, you know, I said to you, two things came out of heaven and um, uh, Jesus and music. And so I asked the question, God, so what's the purpose of music? And the truth about music uh, that, that it came down to me was music is the thing that God gave us to tell the story of what we see. Because there's no song without a story. There's no song without a seer. That's why David chose seers and appointed seers in the temple because he wanted them to see So I began to realize that the greatest writers amongst us aren't people who are the greatest musicians. Neither are the greatest narrators of stories, the ones who are the greatest voices. But actually, the greatest musicians, muse, the word muse comes from the word entertain. And the word entertain means to capture somebody's imaginations and emotions and in a moment. Yeah, Uh, Entertainment is not... The, the, the mainstream world is using it right. We try not to use those words in church because they're not kind of Pentecostal or charismatic words. They sound like the world, but that's yeah. exactly what happens when we stand on the stage um, as a, as someone. So I tried to write songs that this. I realized that nothing happens in this earth through a person unless God gives them an experience. Yeah, God doesn't use anybody. And I began to realize that when you have an experience, to be able to tell that story in a cohesive way so people get it as being part of the skill set. So my process is God gives me a theme 
and I begin to look in his word, but I also begin to look at how my humanity sees it. Yeah. And I try to blend the two together. So it means that the worship experience of the believers, hopefully sitting in the, in the audience who's come to church, not to watch me, but to see me reveal Jesus. Yeah. The songs become the keys that unlock, but I don't worship the songs because one of the issues that we have in the worship fraternity around the world is, is that we have, we have been on the edge of worshiping worship. Yeah. And um, all worship is meant to do is reveal Jesus, which it does. But what we've done with the masses, the masses have gone, well, um, I like how this sounds. Yeah. And this sounds like worship. And culture is so fickle because culture is brilliant. Um, it doesn't matter what anybody wants to say. Once you're born in this earth, you become a part of a culture. Culture is seen, heard, and felt. And the way I speak is because I was born in England. No doubt if I speak that, if I was born down the road from you, my accent would have the same, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I mean, look up you and I would see exactly things that you see. Well, technically, you know, yeah. so, so then my story would be basically the same as your story because I'm seeing what you see now. My humanity may give it a different hue because I'm a black man. So I'm going to write from a perspective that goes, well, you know, I, I, I'm here. And I see this. You're going to write from there. You see this. Yeah. Now, the issue around worshiping, wor writing worship songs is that my eyes have to see through the lens of the Holy Spirit and through the lens of Jesus and not through the lens of my color exactly. Yeah. So now when I'm writing and I'm talking about the faithfulness of God, so my latest album is called I Surrender. And the theme song, you know, I Surrender, um, when people hear it, they go, whoa, it's like a hymn, but it's not a hymn because it has some hooks and it's got some words. You know, it starts with, I surrender, I'm giving you my all, which is, and then I, I then I go, I'm not going to stay there, but I'm going to tell you why I'm surrendering. Mm. You know, I talk about my desires and, and the things that I'm passionate about, how I don't want to make them idolatry, so I'm going to surrender them to you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to surrender myself to you. So they come under that surrender. Sure. So and and then I then the song ends off with this this phrase where I go I'm letting go I'm letting go you know all that I am I'm letting go because oftentimes as believers we we go we use the word surrender and we surrender the things that look like God yeah that that feel like God but we don't surrender the things that we have that don't don't look like God or don't sound like God so we have this schizophrenia so when we come into church we feel it and we know god we know that and we leave church and then guess what enemy attacks us and we go why are we being attacked uh, because oftentimes we haven't surrendered things like our relationship the things we're struggling with we haven't surrendered the things that people don't know yeah and so i wanted to write a song that by the end of the song people had no doubt if they sang it that they've actually surrendered everything. Sure. Their thinking, their thoughts, their heart. And this end phrase, I'm letting go. So you can see my process. I wanted to take people on a journey that reveals some attribute of Jesus, something of God. It reveals it to them. And now they respond to that revelation. Because all I'm doing is making sure that you see the lightning for yourself. And your response now is filled with, I have just experienced God firsthand. The difference between the children of Israel crossing that Red Sea and seeing God and when David brought in a new reformation was far because they'd lost, they'd lost the original fire. Mm. The fire was meant to stay alive. So that's why we have to keep bringing ourselves back to the cross, why I said that, because I found in my Christian journey that I serve in church. This is what I do as a living. I serve in church. Yeah. Everything I is around worship and around music and talking about God. Yeah. And I found that I can talk about God and not experience God. Sure. But I began to realize that for, for my for my expression to have power, I must have the experience. Yeah. Um and I go, I need to know the God that's beyond the music. Yes. 
I need to know the God that's beyond my ability to paint this picture. Yeah. Because when I know him, when I paint the picture, there's no shadow of a doubt who I'm talking about. And I, that's a great line for a song, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Remember that. I, I, I talk about, as a worship leader, oftentimes my heartbeat is to fill the room with faith. I like that. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. So your praise is faith in action. Mm. Praise is a verb. It's a doing word. And we begin to unpack it and teach it. We begin to realize that what you do, if you ascribe it to God, he actually takes it and says, this is your faith in action. Mm. It's the reason why as a singer and a songwriter, we can write songs about stuff that we haven't even gone through yet. Yeah. But be prepared that if you write a song <laughs> you have not been through yet. You might go through it. <laughs> you might just go through it. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Yeah. And and this but this is part of the prophetic nature you live in. And the reason why you have to go through it is because believe you me, the three Hebrew boys testimony before they went in, they said if we go in the fire, we're not going to bow to the sound of this music, but if we go in the fire and we die in the fire, we still are not bowing. Yeah. Woo! So that's powerful about that. That's powerful. If I lose it all, if my name is rubbish, if I lose my relationship, if I lose stuff, I'm not going to bow to the music. Sure. Their testimony after they were in the fire and maybe that's something for someone today, that you feel like you're in a fire, mm. but you're worried about the fire, and you're thinking, well, I'm in a fire, but the fire hasn't consumed you. The men who heated up the fire died because it was so hot. Yeah. I meant that while they were walking to the fire, they were not consumed. Why? Because God was already preparing. Yeah, on the way to the fire, sure. On the way to the fire, they weren't consumed. So good. And some of you won't even know that you've been in a fire because you're on the way and it's hot. But guess what? The fourth man appears in the fire, but he was walking with them to the fire. Sure. So their testimony when they came out was like, my Lord, we saw the fourth man. Their testimony wasn't about how hot the fire was. Yeah. Their testimony wasn't about how, man, I had to go through that. I lost it all. And their testimony was like, yes, we were in the fire, but the fourth man appeared. They began to know God. Amen. Praise of God. The praise of God is not That's so good. the shadow of death. The praise is, my God, but I will not fear. Because thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In the midst of the valley, yeah. I see a rod yeah. and I see a staff. They may look insignificant, but God will always send a way of escape. And oftentimes, like Jonah, the way of escape, Jonah's trapped in this big fish. And he's swallowed up, consumed by it. And big fish don't live in shallow water. So I can imagine him down in this water. I can imagine the pressure. You go that deep, you need a submarine. Yeah. I can imagine what was going on in that fish's belly. Because it didn't just swallow him. It probably ate a lot of other stuff. <laughs> so I can imagine the smell. Oh, yeah. my God. Sure. I can imagine it was dark in there. Yeah. Because fish don't have light in their belly. I can imagine... Oh, my days, how intense it was. And the Bible says that he could have complained like he was doing before. Yeah. But the Bible says he began to offer up thanksgiving. Yeah. Wow. And after he began to offer up thanksgiving, the large fish threw him up on land. All I'm saying to people is that in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of things going wrong, where is your praise? Yeah. Because your feeling might not be there. Your feelings might not be there, but your praise is something that you engage in the spirit, not your feelings. So good. You begin to say, Lord, you are my protector. Lord, you are the way maker. Miracle worker, to coin a phrase from <laughs> Synapse. Yeah. Lord, you are the light in the darkness. Lord, you are you are the you are the breakthrough. You are the God of the breakthrough. Yeah. As you begin to speak those things, those things aren't feelings because praise is not based on how you feel. Amen. Praise brings you into the act. And it opens the key. 
because when it comes from a heart that you can, David goes, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He talks to his heart, yeah. his soul, and says, I'm going to bless you, yeah. even though. And I want to encourage people that in the midst of this, sing a song. Yeah. In the midst of this, speak words over your family. Speak the words of life over your family. It's hard because our humanity wars. Yeah. But me as a leader, I want to see you do that. Is it because I've got it right? No, it's because I struggle with the same thing. Yeah. You do. But guess what? I realized that if I don't say it, because that's the calling on my life, then who's going to tell you? So let me say it and come into the same joy that you experience when God breaks through. I experience it. So good. Yeah, it's, uh, I love that. It's, it's Psalm 100. We enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And the stuff that we're, the stuff that we're carrying, when we bring it into his presence, it can't stand. It can't be there. But we have to make that first step, uh, not from a place of emotion, like you say, because we don't feel like worshiping. We don't feel like praising. But that's when it, it's a choice. It's like love. Love is not a feeling so as much as it is a choice. Come on now. Yeah, you it's are... powerful. Yeah, I love it. No, love bro. Not... Every day as married men, we have to wake up. And married people or relationships, we have to wake up and go, I choose to love. Yeah. Absolutely. And then sometimes you're asked to love when there's no return. Yeah. It's still a choice. That's so good. I, I had a guest two weeks ago. Uh, it's a, He's a leader here, a guy called Cassie Garstens, and he, he had such a profound statement. He said that as humans, we actually don't know how to love because our natural way of loving is transactional and yeah. works with an exchange. So I will give if I get... Um, and it's always, we're always uh, calculating. And he Absolutely. says, the love of God is completely sacrificial, completely serving, and it has no expectation. Absolutely. And we can only love that way if we allow ourselves to be conduits of God's love. And that's, yep. that's I think, what also happens when we have those experiences during worship, when that song has been written from that place, that's when you feel like you, you're overwhelmed by the love of God, yeah, and you and you start just embracing that. Um, I still want to write a song. I've I've had this image that God has given me a few times of a tsunami wave of love hitting yeah. His people. I don't know if you can sing about a tsunami, but <laughs> it's contentious. Talk about contentious words in songs, yeah. but, <laughs> but they, 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 we're talking about 21st century. We, you know. There, there are hymns that, when you see the words, you know, a lot of the hymns written in, in, in the UK in English, man, you see the words, you're like thinking, we don't even use those words in our normal language anymore. Yeah. But they do convey a truth. And, and, and one of the stories that people don't understand when you study the history of hymnology and the history of, of songs is that um, in those days, that was new language. Okay. It was new in those days, and they received just as much grief as songwriters and what you know oh you're, you're okay talking, i didn't know that you're talking about many of the hymns many of the hymns they didn't have their own melodies you won't see a lot of the hymns you'll, you'll see um the words and then you'll see a, a melody that's written by somebody else okay and most of the melodies come from sometimes bar songs yeah um, the very thing that happens today what we talk about are we original in our worship expression happened back then you know, people are writing songs. In actual fact, most hymns, I would say there's very few that stand the test of time in their theology. Sure. Because back in those days, it was written with a solid theology that said A, B, and C. Now, D, E, and F has been revealed. And the problem, D and F actually now make A, B, and C make sense. Yeah. But actually, it may make it outdated because because this is this is God's love. God's love is 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 not a permanent fixture. Yeah. That once loved, always loved in that way. It's not. It's not once, you know. It's 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 we 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 grow in life. You yeah. know. You talk before your children. Before my children came along, my concept of love was man and woman. Yeah. Parents, but it was always my parents loved me. I loved my parents. I, I didn't know a little a little babies could love me the way. Well, you know, your kids love you. <laughs> Whoa, that's. That's intense, and that's changed many people's lives. Yeah, 
the, 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 the strongest of men, baby put in their hands and it's their child, it's birthed from them, it changes them. Yeah. And I, there's a sense where every, 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 um, our walk with God should birth these encounters where we see the love of God just being poured out in our lives. Yeah. We go, he really loves me. And I'm being honest, this pand- pandemic, pandemic, I have seen the love of God operate in my life that bl- has blown me away. Sure. Behind. I'm talking about when people send you a message and say, can you send me your bank account? Now, people think, what's that got to do with love? The fact that they're thinking about me yeah, and they've gone, we just want to bless you. Yeah, wow. Like, Whoa, what? Yeah. And it, it's not much, but I just feel that, man, God loves you and we want to, we want to make sure that we preserve the stuff that, that you are. Yeah. And, and I've been totally blown away by that. Because it, because I've not done a concert. Yeah. To, I've not done an event where I go, well, this is what Noel Robinson cost to do this. Yeah. None of that. You know, but somebody's ringing and saying, hey, I'm thinking about you. Hey, how about this? Sure. And the way we can show that is by, and I go, not only that, I had a musician ring me one day. I, rem- I won't forget, ever forget this. And he goes, you know, you're always ringing people and blessing them and encouraging them. And then he says, but I've come to ring and encourage you. (laughs) And when he finished, I was a complete wreck. Yeah. Because when he was praying, it was like God was speaking to me. Sure. Directly. It wasn't like this guy's praying for me. You know, it was like, and I go, and I, I looked at that moment and I went, you are thinking about me, God. Wow. I love that. And I go, we, we, we need to be people who are so sensitive to the spirit of God that it's in the nuances, yeah. the small nuances, somebody bringing you a flower that may be insignificant. Why are you bringing me a flower? Yeah. What, what does that flower symbolize? It could symbolize so much things. Somebody giving you a bag of sugar. Somebody giving you a glass of water. Mm. And that's not me trying to find spirit under every rock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tripped over I tripped over the pavement. Oh, the devil, no, that pavement is uneven. Yeah. That's how I tripped over it. You didn't look where you were going. <laughs> Sometimes it just happens. Yeah. That's why I'm walking into the lamppost. <laughs> oh, the devil, because I was on the yeah, you were on Facebook now. <laughs> but 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 we're observant of the things that come to us that are spiritual moments. Our children speak to us, mm. people around us. In actual fact, the darkness that we're in is speaking. Yeah. So and good. if we're willing to accept when God says, let there be light, he wasn't talking about sunlight. Yeah. He wasn't talking about the light that we know that, that, that governs the earth. He was talking about every single electromagnetic atom, atom that formed carbon, hydrogen, that formed all that stuff. He was saying, you atoms that I've created, I'm about to speak into your nothingness. I'm about to speak into your chaos. And I'm about to form a firmament, sky. I'm about to form plants. As a matter of fact, I'm going to form man from the dust of these this earth, which are atoms. But I'm going to do something unique. I'm going to breathe my life into him. Mm. And I believe that in this darkness, that's what God has been doing. So we, we're going to be surprised when this lifts. Yeah how powerful the testimony of many believers will be. Yeah. They had this moment of darkness, but God came into it. So they now say, I found my purpose. There's businesses that are going to be released. Yeah. Amen. There's breakthrough in people's lives that are going to happen because of this breakthrough. It's not going to be negative. There is ideas and concepts that are going to be released, released inventions. There is going to be a ground of revival. You're going to see some people come out of this COVID going, I'm actually a believer. And you go, huh? i never seen you at church. Well, I found Christ in this place because we arise and we shine. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen up on us. And the glory of God is being everything that he said we would be. Yeah. You know, the glory of Mercedes is that when you open that manual and you go, 
This car is meant to have a reclining seat, heated seats, air conditioned seats. There's supposed to be a TV that works in here. There's supposed to be a heated steering wheel. And no, I don't drive Mercedes, but it's supposed <laughs> to be all, all these things in the manual. And that manual is written by Mercedes. And if you drive that car and half of those functions don't work, it doesn't reflect the glory of Mercedes. Yeah. And how we reflect the glory of God is that everything that God said we would be, we have eternity in our hearts, there's stuff that we're meant to be, that we will become when we become, when we become. Because, you know, I say calling is discovered. Yeah. Who we are today, when God begins to work, we may not be that tomorrow. Mm. But the real deal is that we're obedient. Yeah. And this is the light that we shine through, we rise to what he says we are today and become everything we said tomorrow. So good power of worship and the love of God in our heart. I love it. I'd love to you I'd love you to give a final word to to the church of your nation, our nation, the church of the world and uh, and then extend an invitation to those who who might want to give their lives to Christ or recommit their lives and then I'll end off with a prayer. Yeah. Um, you know I just alluded to um, Genesis 1 where we're in the chaos or what we call chaos. Um, I think that Moses, when he wrote that book, that's how he described it. It was chaos that he could see, but God spoke a word. And I just want to let you know that God is, is still speaking, mm. uh, but God is speaking through us. And, you know, my encouragement today is this, that God wants you not just to speak, but to be. But sometimes we're caught up in doing so much that we never arrive at being. And maybe this season, this time, has been a, a really difficult time for you. In family, maybe you've lost loved ones like I have. Uh, you know, it's been a, t a horrendous time in our humanity. Mm. Uh, the story of Job comes to mind, where Job loses everything. He loses his business. He was the wealthiest man in the world. He loses everything, houses, his lands, his family stolen from him he doesn't deny his humanity he does this amazing thing where the bible says in job 2 he tears his clothes and shaves his head which is a sign which is a sign of god's humanity or his humanity but in the next breath he worships i don't know what worship looks like for you listening but the simplest thing i can think of is just to ascribe breath to God. The fact that you're alive, regardless of your situation, but the fact that you have breath, give him praise. Mm. Thank him. Let your mouth be filled with thanksgiving. Is there anything to thank God about? You probably can find a lot of things to thank him about. <laughs> Maybe he hasn't moved the significant thing that you were looking for. But maybe he's done some small things that are probably more significant than you can think. So I'd encourage you just to worship and praise God. Find moments where you talk with him and you share with him. Yeah. And to those people who may not know who uh, Jesus is, uh, my testimony is that Jesus is the savior of the world. He's not an outdated philosophy. He's not a, a figment of imaginations. He's not a cop-out for the, the non-intellectuals. He's the Lord of all. Amen. And, and you may be thinking that, well, it doesn't mean anything to me. I'm a 21st century Christian. I'm living in the 21st century world. I've got too much grief. But I want to let you know that Jesus cares for you. And he just wants you to cast your cares on him. And the way you do that is through the confession of your heart and the belief in your, the belief in your heart and the confession of your mouth. Mm. And you have to confess that he is Lord of all and that he's your personal savior and receive the redemption that he gives to all of us. And redemption is this simple thing that we are all sinners. Every one of us are sinners who have come short of the glory of God, of who we should be be but because when we receive him now we don't live our lives 
through trying to prove how good we are, but we live in the goodness of God. So we don't talk about our goodness, but we talk about his goodness. So wherever you are, acknowledge that Jesus is your savior and he can save you. There's no sin. There's nothing that you've done that God can't touch and change and revive. So I want to encourage you. Read the Bible. Say a simple prayer that says, Father God, Father God, we thank you that you reveal yourself to me today. Father, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that I've fallen short of your glory. I acknowledge that you are my savior. And Father, you died for my sin. You died that I could be redeemed and, and brought into relationship with Father God, with you. And Father, I pray today that you'll hear my cry and accept the words of my mouth and the belief in my heart that you are Lord. And I accept and turn away from my sins. I turn away from the enemy of my heart, which is Lucifer. And Lord, I turn to you. I turn to you today, Lord, and I receive you. Let your kingdom come in my heart, that your will be done in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this time that we had together. I thank you for Noel. Thank you for his family, his ministry, his music, his songs. Lord, I just come today with everyone gathered here, uh, and we just want to bless him in the name of, of Jesus in his family life, his ministry life, in what he still has to create, wants to create. And uh, Lord, I thank you that as, as a fellow musician, I also I thank you for this lockdown being lifted, the virus being dead, and things opening up again so that we can start gathering again and doing doing those events where we can see mass people come to you, being evangelized, discipled, and live the lives they were called to live. I thank you that you bless him with more songs for the body of Christ that calls us to unity, that brings revelation knowledge of who you are. And I thank you, Lord, that every time, every time he opens up his mouth, your love will just be manifest to more and more people. Thank you that you bless him and strengthen him and guide him. And we pray that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, hi, man. Thank it's you, brother. Well, listen, if people want to find my music, they can, uh, they can find it on Integrity Music. Um, I'm signed to Integrity Music as an artist, so they awesome. can find it. Or they can, or they can visit my website, noelrobinson.com, um, and on social media, Instagram, and all those uh, those places, you'll find me. Um, and uh, and I don't have an unusual name like yours, Heinz. So there's maybe two <laughs> people with a name like that, Heinz. You know, it'll be easier um, to I, find. There's all 150 million people that got my name. You know, uh, but yeah. Um, so look out for the right Noel Robinson. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, I did put all those links in this post, so you can just go to the uh, below in the post and, and click on those links. And uh, yeah, I was you, you you jumped ahead of me there, bro. I was going to tell them all of that stuff, but but well done. You got it in there. Um, we're so excited about your music. Please go and follow him on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram. Check out the website. Support the music. Share the music. That's the most important thing is sharing those songs, sharing those YouTube videos. We'll really appreciate that. And brother, thank you so much for your time Amen. today. I really appreciate it. And I hope we can do it again. And I hope we share a stage one day soon. That'll be amazing. Oh, we're going to do some writing. We're supposed to be doing that. You yeah. Know, uh, I'm keen. Friend, I'm one keen. One of my friends saying, you know, you need to. In actual fact, what was amazing is that um, you were, you were, artist of well several weeks um in the uk and i don't know if you're aware of it on premier radio which is kind of like the leading um christian radio uh in 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 the uk yeah Wonder, yeah you were like artists they were playing your songs i was like how come what? they don't play my stuff as much as uh, <laughs> he's not right he's not righteous well bro like, that is oh yeah i mean they were doing man they 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 were playing your stuff that's so cool every day. On, on nearly all the all the programs, wow! There were your songs coming out. That's so, amazing. Well, I I need to thank our mutual friend eBay. I mean, giant giant killer, 
he he made that happen. So I am just so grateful, so thankful for that. What an amazing man. He's coming on. He's actually coming on the show next week. So I'll be talking yeah. to Eva next week. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you come to London, there's going to be some people that go, yeah, we know his music. Okay, great. I'm so glad to hear that. Well, we're working on new music. So that hopefully that can get out there as well soon when we release. That's, that's exciting. Bro, thank, thank you. you so much. I, I, I appreciate your time. And it's so inspiring to hear your heart for the kingdom, for, for worship. And I thank you for what you're doing. And I pray, I really pray and trust that, that you will come out of this stronger, better, and do more and see more and have even bigger audiences and, and reach more people with uh, the message that God put on your heart. So thank you so much and God bless you. Likewise. All right. I'm just going to greet the people here. Hang on there for a moment. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for Love Unlocks today. I really appreciate it. What an amazing chat with Noel Robinson. Just a reminder to please go and follow his music. Check out his website. Follow him on social media. It'll be so great if you can do that. Um, I want to quickly just remind you that on Thursday, I'm speaking to Pierre Smith. He's actually the pastor of my own local church. He's the lead elder at Every Nation Somerset West and just an amazing man of God. So join us this Thursday at 1 o'clock for that chat and next week we've got two more amazing guests coming uh, as i said it's ebay ota he's a, a christian radio dj in in the uk uh he's actually a mutual friend of, of me and noel uh, so he'll be coming on next week and uh the pastor that discipled me way back in the day pastor philip pretorius will be also joining us so don't miss love unlocks next week if you haven't signed up yet you can still If you haven't signed up yet for my wife and my marriage course, we're doing an online online marriage course over a few weeks, and uh, we're doing a chat about money and finances tonight. You can still get tickets on Quicket for that and join us for the for the next few weeks that we're finishing up on that course. It'll be great to have you join us. And uh, that that that's it from me today. So God bless you. Have a great day, and remember that God's love can unlock anything in your life. Just trust Him, believe in Him, and walk with Him. God bless you. We love you.